let's look at the potential divider, also known as a voltage divider. This is a circuit which is designed to split up or divide the potential difference provided by a source, meaning an electrical cell or a battery, into a desired potential difference. So for example, let's say you had a 9 volt battery, but you don't want 9 volts across your resistor, you want 6 volts across your resistor. The potential divider is a way of dividing up that 9 volts from your source into what you want, into a 6 volts. Okay, and I'll show you an example. Let's draw a battery providing an EMF and we will connect it to two identical resistors. So this is a series circuit, so the current through both resistors must be the same. And we have identical resistors, so they have the same resistance. And if we look at our equation that relates potential difference, current, and resistance, and I'm going to rearrange it here, we usually write it as V equals IR. So if we look at that, if they have the same current through them, and if they both have the same resistance, they will both have the same potential difference. So this circuit takes the potential difference that's provided by the battery, or the EMF provided by the battery, and splits it into two equal parts. Let's put some numbers in there. Let's say that the EMF provided by the battery is 9 volts. The way that this circuit works, you will split up the potential difference into two equal parts across the both resistors. So one resistor will have 4.5 volts across it, and the other one will also have 4.5 volts across it. And if you're wondering to yourself, well, why is it 4.5 volts and 4.5 volts? Why isn't it 5 volts and 5 volts or 10 volts and 10 volts? Well, remember, the potential difference across the two resistors has to add up to the EMF provided by the battery. Okay, so let's look at another example. Let's say that I have a battery and then I connect it to a large resistor and then to a small resistor. So. One resistor has a big resistance, one resistor has a small resistance. Well, we still have the same current through both of them because it's a series circuit. If we look at the V equals IR equation, same current through both of them, but this equation says that the potential difference across the resistor will be proportional to the resistance of the resistor. So, if you have more resistance, you'll have more potential difference across that resistor. If you have twice the resistance for one of them, that one will have twice the potential difference across it. So that resistor with the big resistance, it will also have a big potential difference across it. And that resistor with the small resistance, it will have a small potential difference across it. Let's make it a little more numerical. Let's say we have a 4 volt battery, and then I'll have two resistors. Let's say this upper resistor has a resistance of 3R and then the lower resistor has a resistance of R, where R is just some constant. And I want to know how much potential difference is across each resistor. Well, hmm, let's see. According to V equals IR, if I is constant, and I is constant here because it's a series circuit, the resistance is going to be proportional to the potential difference. So this upper resistor, it has three times as much resistance, so it will also have three times as much potential difference across it. Lower one will have a resistance R, so it will have one-third of the potential difference across it as the upper resistor. So let's see. We also know that the potential difference across both resistors has to add up to four volts. The way to make that work, the upper resistor has to have three volts across it, the lower resistor has to have one volt across it. Then the proportionality works out, right? The one with 3R has three times as much voltage across it, and the two voltages add up to the EMF across the battery. Let's try a slightly different example. Let's say we have a 12 volt EMF, and then upper resistor of 3R, lower resistor with a resistance of R. Well, uh, the upper resistor still has to have three times as much potential difference as the lower resistor, and the two resistances, or excuse me, the two potential differences had to have to add up to 12 volts. So in this case, we have to have 9 volts across the upper resistor and 3 volts across the lower resistor. Let's do one more example. Let's say we have a 5 volt EMF connected to a 5 ohm resistor and a 15 ohm resistor. So if we think about it, let's see. Well, the total resistance here is 20 ohms. Well, the upper one, the it has to have, well, it has 5 twentieths of all the resistance, so it has to have 5 twentieths of the total potential difference. And then the lower one, it has 15 twentieths of all the resistance, so it has to have 15 twentieths of all the potential difference. Well, 5 twentieths, that's the same as a quarter, one-fourth. 
So it has to have one fourth of all the potential difference. And one fourth of all the potential difference is 1.25 volts. So the upper one has 1.25 volts across it. And the lower one should have three fourths of the potential difference across it. So three fourths of the potential difference is 3.75 volts. The lower one has 3.75 volts. Now this is not the only way to make a potential divider. Another way to do it would be with a variable resistor. And a variable resistor is just what it sounds like. It's a resistor where you can somehow change the resistance. You can vary the resistance. Imagine that there's a knob on the resistor and if you turn the knob one way the resistance goes down and if you turn the knob the other way the resistance goes up. And we could use a variable resistor to create a potential divider that would look like this. So let's say that we care about the potential difference across the variable resistor. We want it to be a certain value. What you would do is adjust the resistance of the variable resistor until you get the desired potential difference across it. So if you don't have enough potential difference across your variable resistor, then increase your resistance of it and you'll increase the potential difference across it until you get to the desired potential difference. So this seems like a great idea. Uh, however, one flaw is that it doesn't go over the entire range of potential differences. So what I mean by that is you could take this variable resistor and if you turn the knob until the resistance of it is equal to zero, then your potential difference goes all the way down to zero. And then you can take the variable resistor's resistance and increase it as big as it goes, but you will never get the entire EMF from the battery across it because it's always going to share some of the potential difference provided by the battery with the other resistor. It will always only be able to provide some fraction of the EMF across the variable resistor. You can never get the full EMF from the battery across this variable resistor. So there is another model for a potential divider and that makes use of something called a potentiometer. And I'll draw the symbol for the potentiometer it's a good representation of what it is because if you look at this little arrow that arrow is able to move and what it does is it changes where the current can split off so I'll draw it a couple different ways let's say that the arrow is all the way at the top of the potentiometer and I'll draw a circuit where we have a potentiometer in it and a little resistance off to the side. Well, in this situation, when the arrow is all the way up at the top, all of the potential difference provided by the battery, another way to say that is all the EMF provided by the battery, is across the resistor over here. All right, so when the arrow is all the way up, we get all the EMF from the battery across this resistor. Okay. Now if we take the arrow and we move it all the way to the other extreme, all the way down to the bottom, in that situation, well, let's see, the resistor over here will have no potential difference across it. The way to see that is think about what the current would do when it reaches that little arrow. It has two choices. It can either go through the resistor or it can go through the wire. Well, it's not going to go through the resistor. Why would it take a path? with any resistance on it. It's going to just go through the wire. Another way to think about it is you have to have the same potential difference across both the wire and the resistor over here because they're in parallel. Well, there's no potential difference across a wire, so there's going to be no potential difference across this resistor. So in this situation, in this setup, when the arrow is all the way down at the bottom, there's no potential difference across this resistor. And if you have the middle situation where the arrow is somewhere in the middle of this potentiometer, then there's some fraction of the potential difference across this resistor. This setup, this kind of potential divider, it has the benefit that the potential difference across this resistor over here, as you move the arrow, the potential difference can go from zero all the way up to the EMF. It can go the entire range from zero to the potential difference provided by the battery.